Hi there and welcome to my first video in this series. My name is Jason Bow, and I'm an application engineer with Keysight Technologies. This video is an introduction to Pathwave Thermal Design software. Over the next few weeks I plan on adding several more videos to this series and then building off of this introduction. So if you're interested please remember to save this channel and check back later for more content. Alright, let's begin. Pathwave Thermal Design uses a full 3D finite element method thermal solver called HeatWave. HeatWave has been fully integrated into Pathwave Advanced Design System, also known as ADS. It also integrates with several third-party simulators such as Cadence Virtuoso and HSpice. If you're interested in using HeatWave on a silicon IC design, you'll appreciate the fact that it can solve very complex ICs with large device counts. But the focus of this video is on ADS and on RF microwave type problems. Typically, the device counts we're dealing with in ADS are much lower. Many times we need to analyze not only the IC, but also the package, because the package can really impact thermal performance. And as you'll see in the videos, we can model the package by explicitly drawing and solving it along with the IC, or we can apply boundary conditions on the IC and model the package that way. So here's a design that is very representative of the RF microwave circuits you can solve using ADS Electrothermal. It's a three-stage gas power amplifier designed using a Win HBT process and targeted at WLAN applications. Here I'm showing plots of RF input power and transistor temperature versus time, and also plots of gain versus PN. And as you can see on these plots on the left, it was simulated using a pulsed RF input signal. The plots are separated into two different design iterations. In the upper plots, the design was laid out such that the bias network is thermally isolated from the RF transistors. This results in gain hysteresis, which is a manifestation of thermal memory effects. Note how the temperature of the bias transistor, T mirror, does not track with the temperature of the RF transistor, TRF. Now contrast that with the lower plots where the bias network and the RF transistors were thermally coupled together in the layout. And note the reduction in gain hysteresis. This slide also includes a plot of mean time to failure, which is a common measure of a device's expected lifetime. And as you can see, it decreases with temperature. A commonly cited rule of thumb is a device's lifetime is cut in half for every 10 degrees increase in temperature. Of course, the exact lifetimes depend on the materials and the technology. And this plot is illustrating another key benefit of full 3D thermal simulation over the simpler approach of using self-heating models. Since we can capture all the mutual heating in full 3D, we can more accurately predict device temperatures and discover potential issues with respect to reliability or performance. There are two different ways to invoke thermal simulations in ADS. You can run a full electrothermal co-simulation, which requires both a schematic and a layout, or you can run a layout-only thermal simulation, which is called floor planner mode. In the next two slides, I'll walk you through each of these modes. To run an electrothermal co-simulation, you will need both schematic and layout views of your design. Also, you'll need thermal technology files. The thermal tech files define material properties, the mask and heat layers, and the substrate stack up in the Z dimension. There are many foundries which provide thermally enabled PDKs in ADS, and they include thermal tech files. The process begins by running a circuit simulation. We support DC, AC, S parameters, harmonic balance, transient, and circuit envelope. The initial circuit simulation will use some initial temperatures for all the devices, and then it solves all the necessary electrical equations and calculates power dissipations for all the devices. These devices can be active, like transistors or diodes. They can be passive devices, like resistors or inductors, or they can be interconnects, like transmission lines and vias. All calculated power dissipations are then passed into the layout. The thermal solver uses them to solve the layout in full 3D. Then temperatures are passed back to the schematic device models and a new circuit simulation is performed with these updated temperatures. This process repeats. 
until there are self-consistent temperatures and power dissipations within some user settable delta T and delta P values. So there are two main benefits to running a full electrothermal co-simulation. First, you get more accurate device temperatures, and therefore you can potentially get more accurate circuit simulations, which is an assumption, of course, that your device models are accurately varying versus temperatures. And second, you get a full 3D temperature profile of the layout. There is a built-in 3D viewer that allows you to post-process and view temperatures in 3D, and you can use it in various ways to gain insights. To run a floor planner simulation, no schematic is required, but you still need a layout and thermal technology files. Even though the name floor planner might imply that you can only use this in the beginning stages of a design, you can in fact use this to simulate entire layouts. The layouts can include all layers and all your devices if you'd like. The only difference here is that you have to manually define heat sources and their power dissipations. So this could become tedious for a large number of devices. However, the floor planner does have an easy to use wizard that somewhat automates the creation of heat sources. You can create a single heat source or arrays of heat sources. If you're creating an array, the wizard will automatically split the power between all the array elements. And this allows you to easily create heat sources for things like multi-finger transistors. So that was my brief intro to Pathwave Thermal Design. In the next videos, I'll explain electrothermal co-simulation and the floor planner in more detail. And I'll also record some demos, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching and remember to check back for more videos in the future. Bye for now.